my chance to talk about facilitating incremental backup. A little about, about me, I'm Eric Blake. Been with Red Hat the last eight and a half years on Libvirt and QMU, doing a lot of design in the virtualization stack at the lower layers and get to have fun with this topic today. We'll look at what Libvirt can already do for capturing disk backups, then the new API that I'm proposing for doing backups with push mode and pull mode, how the third party applications can access those backups, and what the power of the new API adds, especially in the regards to incremental backups. And with any luck, my demo will show it in action. Uh, I've got some conventions. My slides are a bit wordy. If you want to learn about this talk, read the slides later. I'm gonna skip over details to get to the demo. But most importantly is what I will be using in the demo. I've got images with contents that are there visible to whoever reads the file. And as the guest modifies those images, those changes show up on the screen and try to use that as a data flow to figure out, well, where is the data moving, which files gets which contents, and how do I know it's a backup? So I'll try my best to explain those uh, usage patterns. Um, as a baseline, I use QMU 3.0 as it was released and shipped by Fedora. There are some bugs in QMU. If you use it just wrong, it will crash that have been fixed since, but they won't hurt the demo today. Uh, Libvirt 4.8 plus my patches to add the new API. They were posted to the mailing list, but still undergoing a lot of review, a lot of discussion. So there may be some tweaks to what finally lands in the tree compared to what you see today. Um, of course, we want to see what can Libvirt already do. We can start by creating a guest with two disks. Dying two is more fun than one. We want to make sure this works. Um, Vert Builder is an amazing product, thanks to Rich and friends. Um, I'm going to use Vert install to create a Fedora 25 guest, Y25, because that's what I had cached on my laptop. I'm not going to waste your time downloading a full image. And we're gonna start this guest. It's gonna have two disks, each with a backing file. So data-wise, we started with the OS install, then we created the overlay files, and as the guest writes data into the overlays, there's two different sets of data in the file, and a third set of data is what's logically what the guest sees. And Demo wise. So again, to show everything, I am running with SE Linux enforcing. I'm a good citizen. Um, <laughs> run with my self-built libvirt, but stock QMU, uh, vert builder, some time compression there. Amazing how fast you can build an image, build my disks, uh, load my vert install with two disks, create everything, start my domain, and boom, we have a demo ready to go. Now that we've got our demo, the first thing we can do is verse block copy as a way to copy data. Uh, the concept here is that we set up a live mirror. Everything that the guest already has written, QMU starts to copy into the destination in the background. Whether that's a shallow copy, I did that on the, a shallow copy on the first disk, or a deep copy on the second disk. And as the guest comes along and writes, the writes overwrite anything that has already been copied, and you always have the latest state of what the guest sees into your mirroring. When you are happy that the mirroring has captured the entire contents of the disk, then you have to stop the guest, tell Libvirt to copy the, uh, to close out the copies, and then resume the disk. The downtime is small, but it is downtime. Uh, as a result, your backup file has the data at the time you ended the command and anything the guest writes after you ended the command is now separate from the copy you created. So you have a backup. 
Um, a lot of APIs were involved, ver domain block copy, which called drive mirror. I'm not gonna read this slide to you. <laughs> Comparison table, point in time is at the end. That's lousy, nobody likes that, but it works. Uh, domain modif, uh, we didn't have to change the domain. We had the same set of disks from Livert's point of view, the whole operation. Multiple disk, I had to pause the guest, oh well. Uh, shallow copy, we can do shallow or deep if we have a chain of disks. Um, API calls, I used a bunch. Uh, third party use, QMU did all the writing, nobody else got a chance. Incremental, nope, it's all or nothing. You get the disk or nothing else, or the disk as it is. So can we do better? Uh, we have snapshot and commit. Every time we create a snapshot, we create another layer of chains of disks. If we are temporary about it, then we can use it for backup purposes. If you're permanent, you can do a little bit more playing. Um, with the temporary command, uh, snapshot, your snapshot starts out empty. As the guest writes data, the guest visible data changes and the Snapsh the new layer in the chain changes, but the old layer stays put. Therefore, I can use third-party tools to read that old layer. Uh, copy with reflink always is nice and fast if you have a sufficient file system. Cuma image convert, uh, if you have some super cool, I'm going to log into my storage array and tell him to do the snapshot. Whatever you have, you can copy the read-only file while the guest is still writing, and you will see the data at the point you created your overlay. And then when you're done with your overlay, you commit things back in. Block commit has to do multiple commands, and uh, Libvert will say, I remember what was in my temporary overlay as part of committing it, I will merge it back down. And as the guest continues writing, your snapshot, your copy, stays unchanged. So you have a valid snapshot and lots of APIs again. So we got a point of time at the start, that's better. We had to change our domain XML, boo. If we have to reboot things and we're manually generating the XML every time, that means we have to track all the XML changes. Although it gives us some flexibility. Um, the fact that we created a snapshot, we can create multiple disks at the same point in time with no effort. We didn't have to pause the guests to create consistent guests. Uh, shallow copy is still supported. Uh, one less API call. Uh, third party, you can only copy what is a standalone image. Well, you can do whatever you want with the standalone images. If you want a diff it, great, but diff is just as good as reading the whole image yourself, so. Uh, incremental, again, if you, if you have a snapshot paradigm where you create a snapshot every day, you're sort of keeping incremental debt backups already, but you're doing all the work. So the new API, first thing, everything delivered is XML. So uh, I'm going to create an XML. I want to do a domain backup. I'm gonna do a push mode. Push says QMU has the data and will push it into the destination. Uh, I have my two disks in my thing. I'm gonna push to backup 1.1, QCOW2, uh, I want a shallow copy. And I'm gonna push my second disk to backup 2.full.raw. Um, so again, we have some flexibility. Whatever QMU knows how to write, you can put your backup into that image. Um, we're going to begin the job. Verisage backup begin with my domain and this XML that I just described everything creates the backup job. This looks very similar to the mirroring job that I showed earlier. The difference is that now QMU knows to copy off the point in time at the beginning. So QMU starts by saying, well, if the guest beats me, guest takes priority. Anytime the guest writes to the active layer, the new data goes to the active layer and the old data goes to the backup so that we have the point in time at the time I started the backup. And meanwhile, QMU in the background is scanning the entire image. Everything else that the guest could see gets copied in to the backup. If it's a full backup, if it's a partial backup, or if you do a shallow backup, it only copies what the shallow needs. Um, the operation is resilient. The operation runs for as long as the guest is live. If Libvert restarts, the operation is still going. 
and then we do have to wait for it to complete because QMU is pushing the data and it's pushing the data for the entire disk. We have to wait around until QMU says I'm done, at which point he'll send us an event uh, or we can pull for it using DOM job info. And when we have our answer that it's all there, then we can say go ahead and end the job, at which point we have a backup and the guest continues to write data. Um, new APIs, ver domain backup begin is in there. Uh, some of the existing APIs get a little bit smarter. Ver domain get job stats can now query about the backup job. Um, polling still works. So we've improved. We still do it at the start. Now the XML for the domain is unchanged through the entire operation. We do multiple disks as an atomic group. Uh, shallow copy still there. A lot fewer APIs. That's good. It means Livvert's doing all the work for you. Uh, third party use, not yet. We'll get there. And incremental, yes. We'll get there too. <laughs> NBD, we're gonna change from push mode to pull mode. All I did was change the mode line and add a server line. It says I want an NBD server living here to expose my images. I'm going to expose image VDA as is. Image VDB, uh, I don't like what you're choosing. I'm gonna give you a file name that you have to go through. Um, this is great if you have an image stored on remote storage, but you want your scratch on local storage for obvious efficiency reasons. Uh, and then if I tell Livvert it needs a scratch file, then I better have that scratch file available. Begin the job, same line as before. It's this time all I did was pass a different XML file. Same setup as before, Livvert creates a file name if, it, if I didn't, or it uses the file name I told it to if I did. Same thing's happening, the scratch file starts out blank and QMU uses it as it needs. Why do I have a scratch file? Well, in push mode, anytime the guest writes, QMU takes the old data and writes the old data on your backup. In pull mode, anytime the guest writes, QMU's not writing to the destination, so it has to store it somewhere until a reader comes along. So QMU is writing to the scratch, waiting for the reader to come along and the guest still sees the new image. So even though it looks like your backing chain dependency, we've got a little bit different semantics than usual. Now, we've got an NBD server, what can we do with it? Well, the easiest is QMU image can connect to NBD servers and pull it off in whatever format QMU image knows. Um, so while the, disk, while the guest is running and while QMU is copying data around, I connect my QMU image command and start reading off data as fast as I can see it. If a guest write comes in in the middle, then QMU copies the old data. And again, I'm still reading the old data, so I see the same data whether or not the guest makes changes. It makes it very nice that I see a consistent view of the guest. Um, that's not fast enough for you? Well, we can do um, use the kernel NBD client. Use mod probe MBD, connect up with QMU MBD to turn on dev MBD. Now I have dev MBD. I have a raw block device that shows me the guest contents. I can do whatever I want. I can do DD, capture a subset of the image. Yay, I have captured one megabyte out of the entire image by reading regardless of whether the guest has written to that area or not. Or even fancier, I can ask QMU where are the important parts to read. I'm going to do a QMU image map with my source file as information and say where is the data, where is the holes, and if the line has data, then I will do a regular expression match and a QMU IO copy on read, so I know there was data, I'm going to read it, the act of reading it copies it, and now my backup has a copy of that data. If it was not data, then I just continued the loop and then I skipped all the holes. So it's a little bit faster. I only had to read a subset of the disk because I used the image map details. And then when I'm done, uh, I started my image back pointing to my NBD server. My NBD server is going away, so I rebase it to be standalone. Uh, again, QMU image map tells me here's your data of interest at which point my copy process can read the data of interest into. Now, I read it into QCOW2, but if you write your own NBD client, you can write it into whatever format you desire at whatever speed you desire. Um, 
when I'm done copying my data, notice I had multiple clients. They all read the same data. They all ran at the same time. When, when I was done, I tell uh, Libvirt that I don't need the MBD server anymore, Versh backup end, uh, get rid of any scratch files that I had to create, and I have a backup file that has everything I needed, and the guest continues to write data. Uh, under the hood, it's the same verse, ver domain backup begin, except this time uh, all the work was in the push parameter to domain backup. So the same API call does both push and pull. Uh, a little bit of comparison, they look the same in Dell shallow copy. We don't have shallow copy in backup yet, but that's XML can do it, so we can get that in the future. One less API, that's because I didn't have to pull for QMU to be done. I had to decide when I was done. Um, and third-party use, yay! I just showed some third-party reading it. Uh, future enhancements, we'll want to let libvirt pick the port instead of you having to pre-specify. We'll want uh, TCP encryption or Unix sockets. Um, we want QMU to allow more than one job in parallel. There's, if I'm reading a backup and somebody else wants to read a backup, that should work. QMU doesn't support it yet. We'll get there. But the API permits it because everything that the API does returns a job ID and we can have more than one job ID. And everybody came here for differential backups. Let's see what happens. Uh, definition wise, as your guest is executing, you create a checkpoint that says this is the point in time. Please remember all changes since this time. It's called change block tracking is another name. Um, Livert's or QMU's implementation of that is it creates a bitmap. Every time you write, the bitmap gets a bit set saying this cluster is now dirty. Uh, you can create a new checkpoint that says I want a new point in time to track. Livert's implementation of that says, well, okay, stop this bitmap. He's now frozen. Create a new bitmap to track the new changes. An incremental backup says read to my most recent checkpoint. No questions asked. A differential says read to an arbitrary checkpoint, and then libvirt under the hood says, well, I know that that involved multiple bitmaps, I'll merge those data together, and now you have a single picture of all changes since that point in time. Um, first thing we can do, how much is the guest dirtying? We can uh, create a check map and then query with the size parameter and see the guest has touched this much data. If I do a backup now, that's approximately how much data. It's a live number, it's always growing. So overestimate, if you're actually sizing your destination to exactly what you read, you may find yourself running short. Um, checkpoint delete when we're done with it. But we want the, uh, there's the XML again. But we want to go on to incrementals. So same XML before, I'm gonna go as simple as possible, but this time I'm going to create a checkpoint at the same time. So now my command has my backup description and my checkpoint description. Both of them get created at once. Um, Activity-wise, as the data goes into the guest, their checkpoint starts tracking what the guest has written at the same time as the backup is reading the old data. And then when things are done, now I create my next backup. And I want to be able to read just those dirty bits. We need help from NBD. So NBD has added an extension called NBD command block status. And QMU has added QMU dirty bitmap name, which exposes as block status, here are the portions that my bitmap says are dirty. So with a little bit of fancy setup and a lot of luck in this same loop that looks like we saw before when we read the full image, we're using map to say where are the dirty bits and the loop to read the, just those bits and then rebase on the end and we have an incremental snapshot. Uh, again, the data has flowed through. We've captured only the parts that the guest wrote since the last time. We can rinse and repeat, do this as many times as we want, get a longer chain. Um, notice that the chain that the backups have have slightly different contents than the chain that the guest has. That's okay as long as when you read the chain, you see the same data as the guest saw at that point in time. Uh, you don't have to create a snapshot. You can do an incremental diff with just um, without a checkpoint, and then that just lets you snoop the disk. And again, the differential, the point, the fact that I can jump back to an earlier point in time and show the older, chat, older snapshot. Notice when I do a new uh, run that I see different data in, the guess, in, in my second backup than I do in my first. 
That's because the guest is always running. Your incremental backup is at the point in time you start it, and if you start at two different times, you'll see two different guest data. Um, so there's the XML. Libvirt is running a lot of QMB commands under the hood for your benefit. And we have more beyond this talk. If you stick around for Vladimir, you'll learn more about how they run. Now on to the demo. Uh, let's see. And... With the full bitmap, or full backup, I'm gonna show I created the XML ran my guest. Um, I am actually SSHing into the guest to make some changes on the fly to show that yes, this is a live guest running and that I captured the point in time before I made those changes. Um, so for example, I started my backup before I touched file A and then use my various means of reading, QMage, convert, or mod probe, and use the kernel dev NBD, or use my fancy loop of reading which parts of the disk are interesting, read just those parts. And at the end of the day, when I have my image, I can remove my scratch file. I'm gonna ask Guestfish what's on my incremental image, um, FSCK. My disk was slightly dirty, but it was cleanable, so it was like a hard power, I pulled the power out. You could also use QMU guest agent and freeze your data so that it's consistent from the get-go. Um, my data shows that my disk was empty, so even though I touched file A, it was after the backup began and we didn't see file A, that's a good thing. Uh, and then incremental backup. Here we go. We can create something, uh, for a checkpoint. Notice that nothing's changed right away. I touch a file, we check again, and data has changed. And the OS disk is changing a lot faster than my very specialized second data disk. But you can use uh, QMU image measure to estimate this much guest data will transfer into a QCOW2 size of that much. Um, continuing on, as we run the backup, I'm gonna do my first pull. Uh, I got tired of typing that fancy loop, so I pulled it into a shell function that sets everything up um, and then shares the code between a full read and an incremental read based on what parameters I passed, but the gist of it is still, I ask QMU image map, what are the portions that are interesting, and then from those interesting portions, do a QMU IO copy on read to copy them into my QCOW2. If you wanna write your own NBD client that does all this, go ahead. You don't need to use QMU IO or QMU image. This is just a demonstration of the NBD worked. Uh, use my function, my full backup. To, touching one file touches a lot of your disk. Well, it's also the fact that formatting it and turning it into ext4 and et cetera. My incremental backup was a lot faster. Touching one file touched four sectors of my disk. Well, I guess there's the file, the directory it was in. Uh, it makes sense, but it's a lot less. Uh, continuing on, we'll do another poll. Um, run everything. Uh, keep on touching files in between to see that it really is incremental. Uh, VerseH has some fun that you can see what checkpoints do I have. Checkpoint three is my current one. Um, when I do my backup without a checkpoint and capture my data there. Now I'm gonna use Guestfish to inspect them. If I inspect my most recent image, error four, it could not FSCK. My file by itself does not have a complete file system. That's good because it's an incremental snapshot. It shouldn't have an entire file system. But when I rebase it to be on top of my earlier snapshot, now the same command, FSCK says it was power unclean, but I was able to clean it, now it's clean, and there's every file that I have listed on my disk. Run on my earlier snapshot, and file E is not there because it was an earlier point in time. So with that, I have done incremental backups. Any questions, or are we out of time? <laughs> We're out of time, thank you.